Ben Jimon is very, very good. A native of Germany with family in Israel and Argentina, he moves easily among those and other countries, picking up musical influences while retaining a certain humble cosmopolitan air. Musical training in Israel, college in London, summers teaching disabled barrio children in Cordoba, he has seen a lot and he's given a lot. And he has sung to a million people at the Brandenburg Gate in Germany. And he's written and recorded hundreds of songs and he's played gigs from Berlin, Tel Aviv to Los Angeles. A pop rocker who writes and performs with the precision of a seasoned professional, he knows how to hold a crowd or lay down popular tracks. And he's also determined to give back to live and sing with integrity and to be his own man. Now living in Los Angeles, he's entering the U.S. market with a scintillating EP, Through the Universe. I was at the EP release party. I interviewed Ben for Vince Magazine, and I was so taken with him that I wanted to share him with you. Ben, welcome to Music Friday Live. Thank you. Hi, Patrick. Hi. Uh, Ben, you're now in my hometown. Uh, why did you move here, given all the other choices of places you could go to? Um, I would say the main reason why I moved here is because I was invited by a very, very good producer, and that was uh, a year and a half ago. And he heard my music, um, and I came here for, for the Muse Expo, actually, and he asked me to sit down with him and to see if we can work together. And that's what we did. And at some point he said, okay, you know what? You should move here for a few months. Um, I'll help you with everything that you need. And that's what I did. I came here. I spent here a few months, and I fell in love with this city and with the people that I met. And I decided, okay, this is my next station. <laughs> well, I, I love to hear that because this is my hometown. <laughs> uh, did you record? That means you recorded the EP here, right? That's true. Now, I understand that, that you went into the studio and you had over 40 songs and you came out with, with just these four. How did you pick them and why so few songs? Well, the EP has actually six songs. I Sorry, uh, six played songs, four right. songs at my, yes, I played four songs to give a little taste at my release party, which was last week. Um, but there are six songs all together. And the reason why we decided, and when I say we, I mean my producer and I, um, we decided to take six songs only because we wanted to make sure that I gave, give an impression to to the U.S. market and actually to not only the U.S., but I hope this, this record is going to go everywhere around the world. Um, but specifically here, as this is my first U.S. Um, EP, I wanted to make sure I give an introduction of who I am as an artist and as a person, and what my message is at the moment. This is what I have to say. And so we said, okay, let's make sure we have six songs, but all of them need to be special. Every single song needs to have um, a certain message. Every song needs to be, like, so good produced that everyone will love it. And that was our goal. Well, I, we have four of them that we're going to play uh, today, and I have said in my reviews that your music is very, very professional, very energetic, and very precise. So let's play a bit of, of your single, Satellite, so our audience can uh, understand what we're talking about here. This is Satellite. Tell you, uh, Ben, I, I'm, I'm. It's a good thing I have a long extension on my headphones because I'm dancing. I'm up out of my chair dancing in the in the studio with that. That is, <laughs> I really am. Yeah, really, it's a good thing we're not on video because it probably looks silly. It's pure dance energy. But but I want to ask you about about a line in there. We won't let this world define us. Now now, how do you keep from staying? within your definition of a pop singer rather than the world's definition of a pop singer and still be successful? <laughs> it's a good question. It's a, we love that line also. Um, it's, you know, it's, I think that's what 
that's where we are at the moment with pop music and probably also like in our society. And I think pop music, and that's why it's called pop music, is representing the the mood and and what the people like the general people the populations in this world feel and think so i guess we are in an age where people somehow realize that there's more <laughs> i'm not saying that that wasn't the case before i'm sure a lot of people realized before okay there's a universe out there um but i think right now also in the age of the internet and in the age of of communication everything is going so fast and there's almost like no limitations, at least in a physical sense. So um, basically that was the idea with this line also, to say, okay, like uh, w with our excitement and with, with what we can do in life, we don't want to be limited by, by, by this earth. There's more to it. Well, you certainly seem to be headed in that direction, um... And you've also put some powerful, uh, other powerful messages in uh, in your songs, and I want to I want to play another one of those. Uh, and this is from the EP, and it's got what I think is one of the best messages I've heard in a pop song in a long time. This is not a man for sale. my favorite song on on the EP uh, not only because it's great music but that you lay out a principle and you're sticking to it uh, you funded that the promotion for this with with an oversubscribed Kickstarter campaign which is of course one way not to be a to, to be a man not for sale so is that why you you wrote that song is you want to let people know that you're going to be who you are and you're going to let the industry know you're going to be who you are uh, I guess that's one of the messages, or that's one of, of the ideas behind the song. I think the drive of that song, um, because we most of my songs, I start with the music first and then the lyrics. Um, it's just because music is like, I guess, the best way that I can use to to define my emotions, let's say it this way. Um, but in any way, it's it's such a heart-driven song, and the beat, and it's it's like almost like a march also in the in the middle of the song. Um, but you're right. Like one of of the ideas behind that song is to say, look, um, this is who I am. This is what I do. This is what I love to do. This is what I love to give. This is what I have to give. Um, and that's 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 basically that's that's who I am. You know what I mean? And uh, still, I, I want people to love what they love. We can't force anyone to love anything. But uh, at the same time, we shouldn't let anyone force to, to, do, to, be, to define us. Well, well, I love what you do. I'll tell you that. But uh, I do have a, a, a kind of a business question there. If you're not for sale, how can you get a label? <laughs> well... That's a good question, um, and I would say I wouldn't take that too literally in, in, in that regards because, um, you know what, the, the great thing about music, especially pop music, is that you have a chance to talk to people, and you have to, a chance to, to be a channel also, and that's, that's, that's a responsibility. So I would be happy to find a label um, that shares that idea, 
because I think at the end, a label is still very, very important because a label can help you, especially if you're a new artist and especially if you're uh, coming from abroad. Um, it, it, a label can be great helping you to reach the masses, probably more than any other uh, institution. Well, I'm, I'm sure that there are labels like that right here in uh, Los Angeles. And, uh, in fact, I, I can think of a couple. So uh, I'm fairly confident that you're going to find one. Uh, we're talking with Ben Jimon, and you can talk with him, 347-215-7511, or you can email us, musicfridaylive at gmail.com. A lot of you are emailing us, so let, let's go to some of the emails here. Um, this is uh, Vin Cat in Austin, and Vin says, Have you been to South by Southwest? You would go over really well in the dance section, and it's a great way to introduce yourself to the country that lives outside of the left coast. He's referring to us there. So have you been to South by Southwest? Thanks for the... <laughs> Why not? You see, the sky's the limit, and I, I mean that literally. Um, thanks, first of all, for the question, and thanks for the great suggestion. Um, and at this point, to be honest, I want to, and my team, like I have a small team around me that helps me, we want to go on tour, and for sure, not only um, around the Los Angeles area, but uh, going throughout the States, that would be great. So that's, that, that should be then on, in our map. We'll do yeah, South by Southwest is a great way to introduce yourself. Uh, and, and also, you know, all the labels are there, too. Um, Manchu in Phoenix says, put us on your tour. <laughs> right? So there you have an invitation to Phoenix. Um, Silver in Denver says, um, are you bringing African instruments in? I think I was hearing African xylophones in that last song. Well, if you hear that detail, then I have to say congratulations, because that's, that's almost like a gift that you have there if you can hear those instruments out. Um, it's true. It's true. When I sat down with Davey, Davey is my producer, David Nathan, amazing, amazing guy. Um, we said, okay, and you know what? The title through the universe. I mean, it's 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 also common in the song "Satellites." It appears, but we decided that like at the very end, um, because we realized, okay, we really got a product. We knew that it's it has to be about journey. The whole the whole EP about journey and about like celebrating life. Um, but through the universe came came like at the very end, and we wanted to. Um, to make sure that we also have the influences of the of the stations that I travel to, and I was very fortunate um, until now to be able to travel uh, to a lot of places. And I wasn't in Africa actually, um, but I've been around many many places. And we want to have instruments in there that are different instruments that are like very exotic at some point also. So it's true that's what we used. Well, con congratulations on your sharp ears there, uh, Silver in Denver. Uh, and, and Morrison in um, Austin is asking actually something similar. He's asking, do you, did you get into music while you were in Israel, and do you bring Middle Eastern instruments into the studio with you? And then he has a, a dot, 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 and says the oud. Go ahead. I'm sorry. I, I, yes. I would definitely say that every place that I've visited, especially um, places where I lived, and I, I, I did live in Israel for a while, um, influenced me, of course, as a person, but uh, more importantly in, in, in that sense, uh, as a musician or as an artist. So, um, yes, I didn't bring any live instruments, not for this production, hopefully for the next production uh, that were Middle Eastern instruments, but we included some of them also. Um, I'm not sure which other song we're going to hear um, today, but I can only say that there's one song, um, Tokyo, on the EP, <laughs> that uh, is very influenced by other instruments too. Um, great, great, great production. David and I um, went crazy when we did that in the studio. So um, I can only say, if you haven't listened to this one yet, then listen to that one. 
Well, actually, we do have Tokyo queued up, uh, but I have a couple other questions uh, for you before we play that. And this is uh, sure. Uh, during your career or during your life, actually, you've been given back, uh, and one of the things you've done is you've you've taught uh, music. Can, can you tell us about your teaching in uh, in Cordoba? Sure. Um, when I finished when I finished my uh, studies. I studied music in London. Um, When I finished that, I had a feeling, okay, it's time for to see something different. Um, And I wanted to see a place that I've never been before. And I heard so much about South America. um, So I decided, okay, let's do this. Um, Let's go there for a while. So I went to Argentina. My plan was differently. My plan was originally to, like, travel around... uh, other countries in South America too, but I ended up mostly being just in Argentina because it's so big, the country, and there's so much to see. Um, But the main reason was that I wanted to participate in a social project. So I went to Cordoba, which is a very beautiful city. Um, It's actually the second largest city in Argentina, but I was living in a small, tiny, tiny village next to Cordoba. So tiny that there were still horses on the road and it was like really, 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 really simple, um, but very beautiful. And teaching there was for sure one of the most significant experiences I had so far. Uh, Again, as a musician, but in in that case also a lot as a person because I learned I always say that I learned more than the kids that I taught because they they shared me they shared with me uh, their own life experiences and and their their way of living and that's something you cannot like read in a book you have to see it yourself or you have to to experience it yourself and so I was very very thankful that I had the opportunity to do that. Well, speaking of children, I understand that you you also were involved in a, a hospital project in which you brought children into the studio for recording. Can you tell us about that? That's true. Um, that was in wait, when was it? That was in 2012. Yeah, it's like time is flying. So um, that was in 2012. I was invited by um, uh, a very very good. Um, organization in Germany that is helping with actually with diabetes um, which is pretty big in Germany so they um, invited me because they've seen other productions where I included kids and they asked me well why don't you write a song for us Um, the kids would be so happy and that's what I did and we taught the song to the kids and we sang it in, in, in the places where they were and at some point we said, hey, wait a second, this is so great. We should show that to a bigger crowd. So we said, okay, let's go into the studio. I'll, I took all the kids into a, a very good studio in, in Berlin, and we recorded it in one day. And then shortly after, um, I actually performed at the Brandenburg Gate, um, and there was like a massive crowd, a massive crowd. And uh, we said, okay, that's that's the crowd we need to to share the message. So um, we took the kids with us. Like I had a band, and and I, I took the kids with me, and we like 30 or 40 kids, and we went up on stage and sang oh, in front wow. of yeah, if you believe it or not, a million people. Oh my goodness, what a story! Well, you mentioned Tokyo, so let's hear a little bit of that, okay? <laughs>
Now you step way out of the box on on that one, but uh, musically. But there's a similar message, and the message which comes later in the song is there's a price, and you're not going to pay it. So where did that song come from? That, there's a very interesting story behind this song. Um, first of all, we only have three very... minutes left, right? <laughs> so Sorry. then we, we we made the most important part. Well, I was very inspired by a newspaper article that I read when there was the nuclear cata- catastrophe in Japan, and there was one of the citizens that said that she wishes from all of her heart that, like the government in in Japan, um, would focus less on what's important for the city or how to what impression the country makes in in the world, rather than um, concentrating on the people and what the people need, especially in hard times. So I find that very inspiring, and I wanted, I actually put myself just in a situation thinking of what it means to like be in complete darkness and complete chaos and um, crying for help. Wow. Well, I, I, that song definitely does that. And uh, it shows, we, we've got an email here, which we can't really get fully into it, but uh, Teresa in New York says, your music has many forms. I think you're much broader than just pop. And I have to agree with her. Uh, ben, I think th- that this EP is a fabulous entry into the United States. Uh, it's great music. It really gives people a taste of who they are. Do you have any plans to support this with a tour? Definitely. That's going to come up next. Um, we're working on, on a tour plan, and hopefully I'll be able to announce the date very, very soon. Okay, well, when you do, let us know, and we will be glad to uh, promote it uh, here on the show and probably have you on for a, a couple of minutes to talk about some of your gigs. In the meantime, where can people go to get this uh, fabulous EP? Well, mainly for now uh, online and all the big stores, uh, iTunes, Amazon, and whatever there is, uh, there's a lot. Um, you can go to my website. You can find me on Facebook and all the other social media, and I constantly promote the CD there, and it shouldn't be a problem to find it, and you can download it. Um, and once there's the, the shows are coming out, you can also have a physical copy. Now, and that website is, um, is that the website new.benjamin.com? Correct. Uh, that's uh, N-E-W dot b e n j a i m e n dot com and you can you can get a copy of the uh, ep there and i really think everybody should add this to your collection uh this is a a foundational piece of work from uh, an artist who i believe is going to go a long long way and we're so happy that you're here in the united states and in my hometown and we're so happy that you took the time to join us today on music friday live Thank you so much for inviting me. I really enjoyed it. Thank you. That's Ben Jimon. The album is through the universe. It's available on iTunes and at his website. And uh, we're just we're just about out of time. So uh, as we say goodbye, I'm going to play a little bit of "Die for You," which is another song from the album. That's Die For You by uh, Ben Jimon. It's off of his uh, U.S. debut uh, EP, Through the Universe. And <clears throat> You've been listening to Music Friday with Patrick O'Heffernan from the Blog Talk Radio Network, the Cyber Station USA Network, and our radio affiliates, and on Stitcher. If you like our Facebook page and follow our Twitter feed, you'll get real-time updates on our guests. You can also tell us who you'd like to have on the air, and we'll see if we can track them down. Our producer is Lars Christensen. Our program director is Jason Bartlebin. Our intern is Angeline Serrano. You can download this and other Music 
Friday programs at blogtalkradio.com slash forward slash music Friday. That's blogtalkradio.com forward slash music Friday. You can also get a delayed broadcast on cyberstationusa.com. If you are listening to us on podcast and you still have a question or a comment you want to uh, give to the the artists that we had on today, send them to me and I will forward them on to you. And when they reply, and they usually do, uh, we'll forward that reply back to Back to you. Be here not next Friday. Next Friday we're going to be off. We do get a little bit of a vacation. You know, that's how it is. Uh, once in a while I, I get to, to, to take a day off. But we're putting together a great show, a great show for the following Friday. So you're going to have to go to our website. And uh, as things develop, because we're still talking to the guests there, you'll uh, find out who they are. And uh, they'll be, you, you know they're going to be great people. So you can tune in next Friday. Not next Friday, but the Friday afterwards. So check out our Twitter stream and our Facebook page, and we will update you on those guests. Meantime, good night, everyone. Have a great musical weekend, and here's some more of Die For You.